subject for this series is going to be the functions of the Godhead. The functions of the Godhead is what we'll be talking about the next few weeks. Uh, we are going to be dealing with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. How many of you know that these three are one? Amen. I said these three are one. When we think of God the Father, we associate him primarily with creation and covenant. Creation and covenant. That brings us to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Praise the Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens, the heaven, and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Somebody said like this on one occasion. When you read this verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, if you front this one, you might well close the Bible. All right. In other words, if you don't believe in creation, mm -hmm. if you don't believe God did it, you cannot really say you believe the rest of the Bible. Because here God established himself as the originator, mm -hmm. the beginning, and later we will find out that he's also the ending. So, we're looking at the Godhead. In the beginning, God, you may be seated, Deacon Mary. We're going to uh, uh, be reading and skipping around. But uh, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The term, the term that is uh, defined, uh, that is used for God is Elohim, Elohim. It is a uniplural noun, a uniplural noun, right. Elohim. And this is used, uh, uh, we believe, purposely because in God and in the revelation of God, there will be revealed three personalities of God. And if you notice, I did not say three persons. Amen. This is a mystery because when we think with our finite mind, it is difficult for us to uh, 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 picture God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and not make them distinct individuals while their purpose and their function is distinct. It is declared that they were of the same essence and power. John said like this in the epistle, says there were three the, the word, the spirit, and uh, the water, and said these three are one. These three are one. So when we look at it, say, in the beginning, God, I said Elohim is, the, is a uniplural noun, a uniplural noun, and it is uh, translated from uh, uh, the, the uh, Hebrew, uh, El Allah, El Allah is the, the translation that uh, you receive when you look at it for translation purposes. And it is uh, uh, 
what what we look what we look at and what we consider when we say it is an indication of the triune Godhead. So how do you get that? Because if you keep reading in Genesis, when the world was created, the scripture tells us that the spirit, now you have God, now you have the spirit hovered over the deep. Are you following me? The spirit hovered over the deep. So you have God the Father, and now you have the Spirit. Say, so, well, now that's two. Where do you get the third person? The third person, to help you understand, we have to go to the New Testament. John 1, get it for me, Deacon Murray. 1, 2, and 3. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. In the beginning was the Logos, the word, the expression of God. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. What? And the word was God. And the word God. was God. Read it. The same was in the beginning with the God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Here him. Here we go. All things were made by him. And without him. And without him. Was not anything made. Was not anything made. That was made. That was made. He was in the beginning with God. And without him was not anything made that was made. So, well, pastor, how do you determine the word to be the Christ? The Bible said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, the only person in this three that dwelt among us in a fleshly form was Christ. So now we have God, the spirit, and Christ that was in the beginning. All right? Now, the word Genesis means beginning. Beginnings. You have a series of beginnings in Genesis. We will not uh, uh, take the time to deal with all of the uh, uh, beginnings in Genesis, but we wanted you to understand that God is the originator of all things. Now, uh, I gave you the, the fact that Elohim was translated uh, 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 from El Allah, which, which is uh, uh, one of the three names of the principal deities in Genesis. There are three principal deity names, not three principal deities, but three principal deity names in Genesis. Elohim, Jehovah, and Adonai. These are the names that are used for deity in Genesis. Now, the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, uh, while it's how many chapters? Come on, Bible scholars. How many chapters? 50 chapters. Now, uh, you can read that uh, uh, in a short length of time. But the book of Genesis really cover over 2,000 315 years of events. So when you begin reading Genesis uh, uh, 1 and you go out chapter 50, you've covered 2,315 years. All right? All of this is, is covered in Genesis. Okay? Now, Genesis to help you understand the importance of Genesis. And just in case you say, well, that's just a story. Genesis is quoted in the New Testament 60 times. You find quotes from Genesis in the New Testament 60 times. 
All right? Now, not only in is, is 60 times, but it's also in 17 of the books in the New Testament is where these quotes are found. All right? So now, uh, the name, the uniplural name, Elohim, Elohim is used in the Old Testament 2,500 times, 2,500 times. We are establishing the Godhead, the principles of the Godhead. These three are one. All right? Why would you uh, 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 go this way, Pastor? We go this way because Colossians 2 and 9 says what? For in him, for in him dwelleth who? all the fullness. Christ, for in him Christ dwelleth all, all the fullness, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, of the Godhead bodily. In Christ, the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. So uh, uh, the epistles and the Bible writers recognize the fact that there are more personalities that we deal with when we're talking about God than just what is revealed in Christ. I say we go back to uh, God, the originator, the creator, his responsibility, his function in the Godhead. He is the creator, the originator. He is the covenant maker. He is the covenant maker that he established in the book of Genesis. He established four of the major covenants that is made between God and man. Four of them are recorded in Genesis. Uh, uh, the first is the Edenic. I got it. The Edenic uh, uh, covenant. All right. Second is innocence. Third is uh, uh, Noah. The fourth is the Abrahamic covenant. These are the four covenants that you find in the book of Genesis. Each one of those covenants, simply when we say covenant, it simply refers to how God responded to situations and circumstances that existed at the time. At the, the, the Eden covenant, he created man in, man in his image. Man fell and they dwelt in a state of innocence until Noah, when God destroyed creation, he entered into a new covenant with Noah, I will not destroy by water. How you know me know so no more water, but what? Fire next time. So God is the author of the covenant. Then after that, we come to the Abrahamic covenant, which goes from Abraham to uh, the Davidic, Davidic covenant, which is uh, uh, under the covenant that he made with David. Amen. Am I, am I losing anybody? Uh, are you following me? We, we all need to understand who God is to appreciate what he does. 